Hi, everyone. Are you ready for Heart Health Month Part 1? I know I am. I'm Dr. Mark LeMay, <laughs> and we are here with Shalice Irby, and we're going to be talking about uh, the nutrients that, that have the most influence on the heart and medications that also induce nutrient deficiencies in your body. So tell us about that, Shalice. <laughs> hey, Dr. Mark. So I am really excited to talk about <clears throat> heart health in relation to nutrients, because like I said in our intro video, cardiovascular disease is really a lifestyle disease. And so the most impact we can have on it is by changing our lifestyle. And a lot of that comes down to what we're eating. So the number one thing that I'm looking at when I'm evaluating heart health with a patient, specifically looking at their diet, is I'm making sure that they have enough protein. As we all know, the heart is a muscle. Uh, but we don't necessarily think of it like a muscle, like in our arms that we would be like, oh yeah, we understand. We got to work that muscle. We have to give it protein and nutrients for it to build. The heart is constantly working. So really we, we just need to give it the nutrients that it needs in order to maintain its, its function. And so it can keep beating. So having the appropriate amounts of protein is really, really important. I find that especially women are under eating the amount of protein that they should be having in a day. And if you are older, like past menopause age, then you really should be looking at as a female, somewhere between 60 to 80 grams of protein per day in order to prevent bone loss. And that's just gonna help support your heart health as well as a side effect. So that's, Protein is super important. Uh, the heart is a muscle that can't function without having sufficient protein um, in order to replace its muscle cells, right? And then the next thing I look at is usually fatty acids, right? All the cells in our body are made of protein and fats. So having sufficient fish oils, good quality ones in the diet, making sure we're getting a variety of good fats like avocado and coconut oils and sesame oil, you know, even good quality nut oils like walnut um, and grape seed oil, as long as they're cold pressed, um, knowing how to cook with those oils, how to prepare them and how to include them in your diet is really important to make sure you're getting the most benefit from those fatty acids and those nutrients. So those are the top two things that I'm looking at in regards to nutrients for the heart. Obviously vegetables are really good too, you know, detoxification, sulfur, um, and then I also look at electrolytes and I know as a biker, Dr. LeMay, that's something that you are constantly, you know, concerned about in order to maintain your hydration levels. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you use electrolytes to help support your heart health? Actually, it's been, and you're correct. I mean, about the protein and fat, but again, like when I'm, when I'm biking, the biggest problem that I have when I'm out there biking is muscle cramps. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it like the, the protein and the fats that really helps in the heart muscle not to have like literally like cramping. So for me, the electrolytes are a big thing. So again, like magnesium, calcium, mm -hmm. sodium, all these different electrolytes are really helpful for skeletal muscle to help them prevent cramping. So I make sure that I'm always drinking electrolytes. And then when I take breaks every hour, I take some other nutrients that are electrolytes to help prevent cramping. And boy, it makes a huge difference in the amount of time I can be out there biking and distance I can bike. I mean, it literally, you know, doubled the amount of, you know, work I could do out there on the trails as far as biking goes. Wow. Yeah. That's really amazing. I, and yeah, your overall skeletal muscle, um, if you do get cramps, uh, regularly, then that's not a great sign for your heart health either because it's all connected. Right. So, um, what is a heart attack? Uh, you know, sometimes you have heart attacks because of a clogged artery, right? Um, blood can't get in or out of the heart. Um, but you can also have a heart attack because of a, a cramping contraction issue, right? The heart isn't able to contract as it normally would, just like any other, you know, uh, other skeletal muscle in our body. So mineral balance is super important. And I'm glad that that's something like that you also think is very important and it's helped you with your exercise, <laughs> Dr. LeMay. I remember when I first met you, we had a, that conversation about magnesium and uh, how important that was for people who exercise regularly, especially if you mm -hmm. sweat a lot, because you're going to be depleting your magnesium pretty quickly. 
Yeah, I so, remember you loading me up on uh, magnesium lactate. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, so much. Doing that? Goes, because your muscles are cramping on you. You're not getting enough of that. You need that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So also, why don't you, can you, can you talk about this too? You know, about, about how can medications cause deficiencies in the body? Can you address that issue too? Oh yeah. That is also really important. I know that many people out there listening might be taking a medication for their heart, um, potentially a diuretic or, you know, ACE inhibitor or potentially a cholesterol medication. And so it's important to know what those medications do for you. And hopefully your medical doctor has informed you of that, what the side effects are of those medications. Um, But something your medical doctor may or may not have informed you of is that there are certain nutrient deficiencies or nutrient depletions that happen whenever you take any sort of medication. And so for the cardiovascular meds, the main one we're looking at depleting, if you're taking a ACE inhibitor, you know, calcium channel blocker or a thiazide diuretic is that they're going to deplete potassium. If you are on a diuretic and it's not potassium sparing, um, then that might be something to speak with your doctor about, because that means that it's going to be depleting your potassium and you might need to evaluate your diet to make sure you're getting enough. Um, and you might even need a supplement um, to keep up with that depletion from the medication. So zinc and uh, zinc can also be a mineral that's depleted by ACE inhibitors. And then the other most common um, medication that's given for the heart typically is cholesterol medications or statin drugs. And so this is pretty common knowledge now. Um, I think most medical doctors are recommending a CoQ10 supplement or coenzyme Q10 with statins when they recommend them. It very much depletes uh, the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase that affects (laughs) our ability to utilize our CoQ10. Um, And so over time, any type of statin drug that you're taking um, is going to deplete your CoQ10 stores and you'll, you will need to supplement that. That's not something you can make up in your diet, unfortunately. So those are just a couple things to be aware of. Um, if your medical do- doctor did not inform you that there are always going to be nutrient deficiencies associated with any medication that you're taking. And it's important to know, am I making that up in my diet? Is it something that I have to take a supplement for? Um, especially if you're going to take that drug long-term, if you're only doing something short-term, like a couple months. Um, but as you and I both know, Dr. LeMay, that's not typically how these drugs work or how they're prescribed. So typically people are on these things for years and are not informed of the uh, nutrient deficiencies that they can cause. So that's, it's important to be aware of that. And I think that's something that you do really well in the office with your patients is working with them from where they're at and helping their body manage um, what they're walking through the door with. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, it's just like, we're not saying that medications are bad. We're just saying that, you know, these are not things that you should be using long-term. You should really address the cause of the issue and not just keep on treating the symptoms there because if you are depleted in CoQ10, which uh, I have to give people a tremendous amount of CoQ10 synthetically to be able to match what's going on with the statin drugs, is the most common symptom I get from patients coming in. They say it's like their, their muscles hurt all the time. They're in pain. Mm-hmm. That's because they're low on CoQ10 to be mm-hmm. able to do that. So again, they just have to be aware of these things and know that there are you know alternatives to help them to get things better. And let's, let's talk a little bit about that alternative. So like Next thing we're going to be doing. So coming up next next time, we're going to be talking about what the HSR, the heart sound recorder, is testing. So could you just talk a little bit about more about that for next time? Yeah. So next week we'll be talking more about how I like to evaluate heart health. One of the many ways that I do, other than you know questionnaires and looking at patient symptoms, is using a machine called a heart sound recorder. And we'll be talking more about what the heart sound recorder measures next week. But I can tell you now that the machine, it's just a little box that plugs into the computer and attached to it is a very special microphone that is called a accelerometer. And it has, it utilizes the same idea that medical doctors used to do 
I haven't heard of them doing it any time recently, but you know how medical doctors used to listen to the heart with a stethoscope and make yep, diagnoses exactly. that way. And yep. they would listen to the lungs as well. Um, it's called auscultation. I think I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and yes. yeah, you, you, you learned that in school. I'm sure I, that's not something I learned, yep, but sure um, that was, that's something that I have learned after school to do with this machine. And because it's a special microphone, it can hear sounds uh, that the human ear cannot. So it's picking up on sounds of the heart to let us know how the heart is doing. And that is what we're gonna talk about next week is what that tells us. Great, and again, if people wanna get a little sneak peek about that, uh, we'll put the down in the, uh, the box down below here so you can actually comment comments below here you know, link to the video that you and I did on that so they can mm -hmm. check that out ahead of time. So great. Well, yeah. Shalise, thank you very much for being with us again this week. And I'm looking forward to next week. So everybody, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.